Today I'm going to talk about uh, chromatic aberration and how this chromatic aberration affects your uh, videos. And also I will show a way to get rid of it in uh, DaVinci Resolve and uh, a better way at least for me to get rid of it in uh, DaVinci Resolve Plus uh, Lightroom, which takes a bit of uh, time. So there are different types of uh, chromatic aberration, but essentially it's a problem that you get in the edges of uh, uh, your videos where you have uh, high contrast uh, areas. Uh, for example, uh, a tree against a blue sky. There are different types of uh, chromatic aberration, lateral and longitudinal. In the first case, the object is on the optic axis and the chromatic spread is along the axis. Essentially, the focal point is between the red and blue arrows. Therefore, the red and blue channels will be blurred. In the second case, the object is off the optic axis and you get a shift in the red and blue channels. Now white light is uh, made of uh, photons with different energies and wavelengths. Now here we have depicted the, the visible spectrum. The lower wavelengths correspond to blue, while the higher wavelengths correspond to red. These photons behave in different waves inside the dielectric, such as uh, glass. Glass is a dispersive material because the index of refraction is strongly dependent from the photon energy or from the wavelength. The reason why we get uh, chromatic aberration is due to the dispersivity of the glass used uh, in the lenses. On the left uh, there is a plot of the real part of the index of refraction and for air. The values are uh, quite constant in the visible range. On the right there is an analogous plot for the real part of the index uh, of refraction for a generic type of glass. Of course there are many different types of uh, glass, this is just an example, but the important thing is that uh, the index of refraction uh, in the blue is higher than the index of refraction in the red. A lens essentially behaves uh, like a prism, so white light uh, gets split into its uh, components and to understand why the blue component focuses here and the red there, you need to apply basic principles of uh, ray tracing which are based on the Snell's law. The Snell's law is represented by this uh, equation where you have the medium number one and the medium number two here and one can be approximated with one while n2 is a function of the wavelength. Uh, so theta1 will be the incident angle and theta2 will be the exit angle. We can get the exit angle as the arc sine of uh, n1 divided by n2 sine theta1, which can be approximated by this expression if we consider that n1 can be approximated with the 1. We can write this expression for the exit angle for the blue photons and for the red photons. And because this uh, argument is uh, smaller than this argument, because nb is uh, larger than nr, then we have that uh, uh, the exit angle for the red photons is larger than the exit angle for the blue photons. And this means that uh, basically the exit angle will be different, so the rays will travel according to different uh, directions. So this is just to explain uh, the basics of uh, chromatic aberration. So let's talk now about how to fix uh, the, the, the chromatic aberration. So what I'm going to do now is I will uh, try to find a bunch of uh, nice trees where I can shoot a bunch of uh, videos and then show you how chromatic aberration appears in the video and how to get rid of it. So now I'm going to take a bunch of videos of uh, these uh, trees behind me and see how chromatic aberration appears in the videos. Let's mount the tripod. I'm using a 70-200 Canon lens. That's a good quality lens. So the first thing I'm gonna try is to focus on this tree and the uh, zoom is 200. Four stops and the filter F4.5 ISO 800. I'm gonna take a video of this. As I said before, I'm gonna use two methods to reduce chromatic aberration. The first one is based on the uh, split the combiner node in DaVinci Resolve, while the second one is based on DaVinci Resolve to uh, 
export the sequence into a series of uh, TIFF files and then Lightroom to process these TIFF files to either remove the chromatic aberration automatically or manually. So let's have a look at the sequences. So let's import this uh, CRM uh, file into the uh, media pool. Change. We change the project settings. Uh, this is a 4K video. It's correct, save. I go to the edit panel. Okay, so we drop a video in the timeline. We go to the color panel. We apply 3D LUT. We adjust the lift a bit. And the only thing I want to do is to increase the saturation so that chromatic aberration becomes more visible. And we can see that here. Next thing I do is to add a splitter combiner node where this is the red channel, this is the green channel, and this is the blue channel. So the trick here is to resize the red channel. So if I add another node here, and I come here, I go to node sizing. So if you press Alt, you can change zoom with the more accuracy, or you can just dial in the values. I think with this value, we get rid of uh, chromatic aberration. So it's basically one and 1.001. Now the problem is that you don't have a more accurate control over this. So this is the way of uh, getting rid of chromatic aberration with uh, DaVinci Resolve only. And if we go to the other side, I think it's gone. So this is before, before and after, before and after. And I think it's basically gone. So let's have a look at the other method. Using DaVinci Resolve, then exporting TIFF files and then processing those TIFF files in Lightroom. I'm gonna add another version where I get rid of these nodes. Let's say that we are happy with this footage, but we have chromatic aberration here. So what I would do is to go to the deliver panel and then select TIFF. RGB 16 bits, 4K. And then we we'll render from zero to, let's do four seconds and see how long it takes. So it's saying here that it's gonna take about two minutes. Now exporting this four second sequence took about one minute and 44 seconds. Uh, so 104 seconds. Uh, this means that to export a one minute of sequence, that it would take 26 uh, minutes. And now that we have these uh, TIFF files, we can open Lightroom. And then we just take the first file and we go, we press D to go to develop mode and go down to lens corrections, profile. Let's zoom in. So we see the chromatic aberration here. So if we click on uh, remove chromatic aberration, it fixes the issue here. So if we go to the other side of the image, the chromatic aberration is basically gone. Here is before and here is after. Now, if you're not happy with the result, you can go to manual and uh, remove that manually by adjusting this uh, amount here. And you can also click to the pixels where you have uh, chromatic aberration. Once you are done with that, you select everything and then you sync. Once you are done with the syncing, you go to File, Export, Burn Full Size JPEGs, Hard Drive, and then you select TIFF and then Export. Okay, so we got the files here. We go back to Resolve in under Media. Here is the sequence. 
We drop it down here to the media pool. Now we go to edit. We move this sequence here. So if you remember on the color, we got this one, which is the one with the chromatic aberration. And then we have the TIFF sequence. So if we zoom in, we have before and after. Before and after. And now I want to compare what we did before in Resolve. So if I go to this one, previous version, and I want to compare chromatic aberration removal in Resolve and chromatic aberration removal in Lightroom. So back to color, we have this one with Lightroom and this one with Resolve. It's more or less, it's very similar. Let's go to the other side. See that it doesn't affect the, the colors of the flowers. So back here. We have Lightroom and Resolve. Lightroom and Resolve. This is the version with the chromatic aberration, Lightroom and before. Now how long it took to export the TIFF files from uh, Lightroom, it was 1 minute and 45. So overall, 1 minute of sequence would have taken, at least on my system, about 52 minutes. So 1 minute of sequence, 52 minutes with the processing in Lightroom. Now there might be cases where the Resolve workflow doesn't work, so you need to go to Lightroom or use other software. If you're aware of any other software that can take care of chromatic aberration, please let me know. Let's have a look at another example. And these two videos were shot with the same Canon 70-200L series lens, zoomed at 200, f8 ISO 320. If we zoom to the left corner, we can see chromatic aberration in both cases. Now what's the difference? In this particular one, I've removed the chromatic aberration removal setting in the camera and here it is applied. So if we zoom more, we can see the difference. So probably what the camera does is that it detects the edges and then it does some sort of desaturation and blur. So in fact, when you apply this fix in camera, you're gonna lose some details here you lose some details but you get rid of this color at the edges so in any case still present with and without the automatic chromatic aberration removal in camera this is another example taken at uh, f 5.6 this is at uh, f 2.8 this is f 14 at uh, iso 800 and this is uh, f 8 iso 320 with uh, a uv filter so i want to see what's the effect of having a uv filter uh you just lose some resolution that's it and this is f8 with the iso i think it was 1000 with the one nd filter uh anyway let's see how do we correct for this chromatic aberration so i'm gonna do what i did before so i'll just add another Splitter Combiner node. Uh, we're gonna play with the red channel. This is before and after. Before and after. Let's go to this. Before and after. Let's have a look at the edge. Before and after. And you get this yellow cast here. Now we can repeat the same for the others. It's really hard, for example, for this shot, get rid of chromatic aberration. This was the initial shot after some correction. We see this uh, magenta cast here and uh, it's hard to get rid of this. Plus here you have this uh, blue edges and I don't know how to get rid of this. You can play with the blue channel, but So I think this is probably an example where you want to go for Lightroom. So this is the fourth. Let's try to export this into Lightroom. One, two, three, four. We're just going to export uh, just a few frames. So we export TIFF again, RGB 16 bit. Then we go to Lightroom, library. We add the files. 
go to develop, here it is. Then we move to lens corrections, try automatic. So it doesn't really do the job. The problem is still there, especially here with these blue edges. Okay, we go to the manual one and try to pick up this blue color here. And it has done something. We can increase the amount here. We can extend the range here a bit to see the difference. Now, if you have a more complex, a real video, this might affect other colors. But nevertheless, uh, in this specific case, I think it has done a good job. So this is before and after. Now let's zoom here. Here there is still some problem. Now if this was a photo, then you might, you could do that you just draw around and you drop down the saturation. You can actually get rid of this by dropping down the saturation in the edges. The problem is that as far as I know, there isn't uh, such a tool in DaVinci Resolve. Um, there is an edge detection tool, but it doesn't seem to be possible to generate uh, masks based on uh, the video edges. Anyways, once you are done with this, select everything, we sync, and then we export. Media, and we drop this into the here. So here you see the new, the new sequence extracted with the Lightroom, and the previous one where we tried to fix the chromatic aberration in Resolve. There is a big difference. But as I said, this Lightroom processing could affect other colors. So in summary, I showed you two ways to reduce chromatic aberration. The first one is based on the splitter combiner node in Resolve. The second one is based on Resolve plus Lightroom. So of course, uh, chromatic aberration uh, can be different according to the lens, according to the camera, according to the camera settings, such as aperture, type of ND filters, uh, and also type of subject that you are uh, shooting, and so on. So if you have other workflows, please let me know, and thanks for watching.